For better or for worse, Airsoft AEGs don't see all that much innovation. After all, most AEG mech boxes are still largely unchanged since the 90s. Every now and then, a company boldly tries to shake things up. Brushless motors, Sistema PTWs, ICS split gearboxes. They might not have changed the game like they set out to, but I'm glad they existed. Future designs learn from past mistakes, and latest from G&G is their all-new G3 system, the SGR556, and it's fitting that as we move into the new year, we take a look at what's on the horizon. G&G was kind enough to send this engineering sample model for us to take a look at, and we're excited for the full production release because out of the box, this one left a great impression with a competitive, responsive trigger and lots of unique potential. Yes, it's gonna be rather proprietary, but time will tell if it's worth the trade-off. Before we talk about internals, let's take a quick look at the externals as there are quite a few unique features. Looking at the full metal receiver, the aesthetics follow g gs recent design language with stylistic cutouts that are a bit less realism and more futurism, but it's certainly unique. I have a feeling g g might release more classic standard receivers with the G3 mech box in the future. The trigger guard is integral to the receiver so you can't swap it out, but it is a more solid construction and it's nice and wide for gloved hands. It's also a little bit smoother where some trigger guards can actually dig into your fingers. There's an interesting stepped milling that is reflected on the front of the magwell that we presume is for a little more tactile texture for a landmark. Pistol grip is pretty standard with a somewhat 416 inspired look and a thicker beaver tail area which I'm always a fan of. It's quite ergonomic and has a lot of space that should be comfortable with a range of hand sizes. Selector switch is ambidextrous with little bullet icons instead of letters saying safe, semi, and auto. There's a good detent and notch into place which tends to be hit and miss with many ambi selectors on the market. Mag release is ambidextrous which I'm glad to see as well with a simple lever system for left handed operation and a nice oversized paddle for your right hand. Things like a smooth mag release and notchy selector aren't the most exciting but they're operated so often it can really make or break a gun. g, &G has typically been pretty strong in these areas and I'm glad this one is no exception. We like that the charging handle functions a bit more realistically than standard AEGs. It's not quite the same as a gas bolt, but it's still a nice step up from the typical AEG mock bolt. Interestingly, the dust cover doesn't reveal a hop-up adjustment as this one is actually adjusted through the front, but more on that later. The bolt release paddle is fully functional and it both releases the fake bolt and is linked to the MOSFET unit, so if you run empty, you have to hit it to keep shooting, simulating a real bolt release. You'll also need to hold this down to dry fire for things like programming the MOSFET and testing the gun. The aluminum M-Lock rail is a good middle ground length at 11 inches and we like that there are M-Lock slots on the 45 degree sides as well, though they aren't on the upper side where they are a bit more commonly used for things like weapon light mounts, instead being replaced with stylistic cutouts. We prefer to see M-Lock all around just for utility. Even with modern ARAEGs, we often see rail to receiver alignment issues and we're glad to see a little locking flange to match up with the receiver and the rail alignment on this gun is spot on. The stock is a pretty unique look and as far as I know, it's not based on a real stock design. It has three different ways you can adjust the length and all of them work well, but in my opinion, stock adjustment isn't something you need to constantly change on the fly and more ways to adjust might mean accidentally snagging something and changing your stock setting. We like that it's on the slimmer side unlike wider crane stocks but it also means battery storage is restricted to only the buffer tube. Perhaps most importantly there is only a minimal amount of play on that buffer tube and a solid lockup just feels so much better when you shoulder a rifle. Standard folding metal iron sights which we've seen on other g, &G rifles. Nice and notchy, no complaints there. Metal flash hider on the front over a standard 14mm counterclockwise thread held in with a grub screw. It's a unique look without being too over the top. Moving on to the internals, let's take a look at what makes this the G3 system. Popping out the pin gives you a good look at the insides. In the lower, you'll notice the gears, a MOSFET unit that's actually hot swappable, and the bolt release system. It's pretty cool that you can actually cycle the gears this way to test functionality. Before you close up the receiver though, press and hold the trigger while holding that bolt release and it'll reset the timing to align properly. 
it's actually kind of cool to see this in action. Moving to the upper receiver, the internals slide out with a charging handle, much like a real AR bolt, and you'll notice the hop-up and barrel also slide out with it. There's a metal sleeve around the inner barrel to act as a spacer in the outer barrel. The mock bolt assembly is easy to remove and inspect, and you can see how it's different than a standard mock bolt. The most obvious benefit to this split gearbox system is the ease of swapping out springs for different velocities. Another benefit is a more solid lockup and air seal to the hop-up unit, and this one is keyed into the upper mech box. It actually also has a little lock to further ensure a solid connection. At the front, you can see the optical sensor which detects if a BB is in the chamber, and you can see the connector so it can talk to the MOSFET unit. Fancy. Optical sensors in the chamber have been popular in the paintball world for quite a while, so hopefully this one is just as reliable. Looking at the proprietary hop-up unit, you can see how turning the screw at the front simply pushes back on the lever, giving you more hop-up pressure. Compared to a standard hop-up, this system offers a much finer adjustment with 36 individual clicks of adjustment versus the 10 or 12 notches on a standard hop-up. During our testing, the hop-up setting stayed true and once set, didn't require further adjustment. Reassembling the gun is straightforward and everything goes back smoothly. It certainly feels very well engineered and fitment is excellent. Remember to reset the gears as the receiver won't close until it's aligned. There are a few MOSFET functions you can adjust using just the trigger. You'll need to pull the trigger, so absolutely make sure the chamber is empty first. In semi, press and hold until you hear three beeps. Now it's in programming mode. Press two times, holding it on the second pull until there's a long beep, and now it's in pre-cocking mode. For those who don't know, pre-cocking means instead of starting the cycle from the beginning every time you pull the trigger, the cycle is already most of the way complete, and a trigger pull just finishes the cycle. It makes the trigger very responsive, as you don't have to wait for that wind-up delay. This alone is a very nice feature to have from a stock AEG, and something you'll usually see in custom-built guns with aftermarket MOSFETs. Putting the gun in programming mode again, press three times and hold on the third pull to go into three round burst instead of full auto. Doing the same thing but pressing five times and holding puts it into a five round burst mode. One of the new features with the new G3 system is a remote control to further adjust the MOSFET. We're not sure if this sample model had the function disabled, and GNG didn't mention anything to that effect, but after an hour of trying, we simply couldn't get the remote to pair. We tried new batteries, we tried different combinations of trigger presses and holds, we tried pointing the remote everywhere on the gun, but no dice. It's a shame because there are a few special features only through the remote, like trigger travel adjust, lipo cutoff settings, and an AUG style burst mode with a short pull for semi and long pull for burst. I'm sure GNG will iron out any issues in the final production, but it's nice that you can still access some of those settings without that remote. Being an optical trigger, travel is extremely smooth and there's not really much of a break to speak of. In mechanical keyboard terms, it's more of a linear travel, constant light tension until activation with very little feedback. Reset is insanely short and once you dial it in, will provide very fast follow-up shots. It's not groundbreaking on its own, as there are other MOSFET units that can offer similar performance, but remember, this is a completely stock AEG, zero teching required, and for the player that just wants an out-of-the-box experience, this one definitely hits the mark. On the range, that responsive trigger really shines and definitely gives the feel of a more expensive built AEG. To see the shots a little bit better, we're using GNG's own MF106T tracer unit seen in a previous video. The gearbox cycled smoothly and accuracy with the new hop-up system was very respectable. We pushed out the range to almost the full length of Siege and the gun definitely can keep up with higher end guns. It's not quite going to beat out a custom R-hop setup, but again, for a stock gun, it definitely holds its own. Overall handling of the gun is excellent and we had no problems nailing targets consistently, even with just the stock iron sights. After spending some quality time with the new G3 system, we were left feeling pretty optimistic. 
Other than the remote control not connecting, we didn't notice a single misfeed or other issue, and everything just felt properly engineered. We're pretty excited to see what G&G does with this system in the coming year. Maybe they'll even put the G3 into an actual HK G3 body, a gun that doesn't get a lot of love in Airsoft. What do you think of the new G3 system and split mech boxes in general? A system that's worth revisiting or don't fix when ain't broke? Let us know in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you liked our content and I'll catch you on the next one.